In part one of my CPU frequency versus FPS series, we concluded that for the most part, overclocking something like an i5 really won't give you those additional FPS that you might have been looking for. But in part two, we concluded that when it comes to overclocking just a dual core CPU, those benefits in games are much more noticeable. So the last thing to do then, hence part three, is to up the ante in terms of our graphics card. We've been using a 970 for the past two parts when we tested both our G4400 and our 6600K, but now we're gonna change our graphics card from that of a GTX 970 to a GTX 980. Now, a few of you may be wondering why I only chose to upgrade the graphics card to a 980, not something like a 980 Ti, and that's because I took price into consideration. So the delta between the 970 and the 980 is anywhere from 150 to 200 US dollars currently. And the same goes for the delta between the Pentium and the i5 6600K. So we're looking at a $65 starting point and then uh, ending up at around $240 for the 6600K currently. So that delta is anywhere from 150 to 200 as well, depending on the deals, depending on the day. Uh, so regardless of which upgrade path you choose to pursue, you're going to be paying about the same price difference. I know the ratios don't work out the same because you're starting at $300 for the graphics card and only $65 for the CPU, but nonetheless, you'll be paying the same for either upgrade. That's my rationale. If you don't agree with me, let me know in the comments and we can we can duke it out. Uh, but with that being said, the GTX 980 I think was a great option in this case. Also, I had one on hand. Thank you, Mr. Gordon Guillory. There's a shout out, Gordon, for loaning me your beautiful NVIDIA reference GTX 980. I was sad to see that card go, needless to say. I have a bunch of data to show you all. I've compiled all three parts into this final set of graphs that you're about to see. So uh, because there's so much, there's so much material in all of these graphs, I'm going to play each of the, the actual frame rate graphs about 15 seconds. Now, if that's too long for you, if you're on the computer, I have little forward and backward buttons you can actually click and it'll jump you to the next graph if you're done looking at what you're looking at. If you're on mobile, I'm sorry, you can try scrubbing, but that's, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, so with that being said, here's a bunch of data, have at it.
So I'm not going to say I told you so, but I told you so. I, I'm sure most of you also knew this beforehand. Uh, but upgrading our graphics card definitely yielded noticeable results that we could actually discern in most cases. Uh, even Black Ops 3, which was completely whacked out for the first two parts of the series, uh, actually came through for us and we saw some pretty big spikes in the frame rates when we ran our tests again with Black Ops 3 using the GTX 980 over the 970. But I want to conclude the series by saying this. If your CPU is the bottleneck, so if you have something like an Athlon 860K, which has four physical cores but the relatively weak cores, or a Pentium G4400 which only has two physical cores but uh, relatively strong cores, then your CPU will be the bottleneck if you pair either those processors with something like a 970, a 980, a uh, R9 390, 390X, any of those mid-tier graphics cards will bottleneck those CPUs, definitely. So overclock the crap out of them if you can and uh, you'll, you'll see those added benefits in games that are justifiable. The risks will be outweighed by the benefits. However, in the case of compliments, when you have a 6600K paired with the GTX 970, you're not gonna have a bottleneck on either side of your system. A few of you are saying my CPU is a bottleneck in part one, a few of you are saying my graphics card was a bottleneck in part one. I'm not buying into either of those claims based on the data. Also, if you decide to upgrade your processor to an i7 with either of these graphics cards in your system, the, the, the benefits just aren't there. They're not justified by the additional cost of, of purchasing an i7 over an i5. I have a video backing that up. Check out my i5 versus i7 video in the card above me. But with that, I wanna hear from you. Be sure to leave comments, suggestions for future comparison videos. If you like this series, be sure to let me know. Give the video a thumbs up if you think it deserves one. Give it a thumbs down if you think it doesn't. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Don't be shy, it's okay. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.